Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Simber, VV, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Dave, let's talk about Stephanie or something. What do you want to talk about? Well, what's up? She's uh, taking a leave of absence um, to spend more time with her family and other reasons, which I'm not exactly fully clear of, but that's the public reason. And uh, she'll be back sometime, and that's about it. She's not gone forever. But I don't. But there is no date for her return either. But Triple H is going to continue to work full time in the office. Yes, he's still working full time in the office. Yes. All right. Well, I guess we'll see what happens here. But uh, yep. Would Would you describe what she did as uh, more a figurehead role? I mean, how big a how big an issue is this going to be her leaving and everyone taking up her her role? In 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 what? I mean, she was the public face of the company in the sense that, like, if they had. You know, like uh, um, let's just say, like somebody somebody wants a WWE person to uh, you know do a symposium or something. She would be the one that they would send. You know, she would do the buzzwords and everything like that. Um, you know, very you know public relations with the key people and everything. You know, keep in touch, schmooze. You know, things like that. I mean. Creative wise, she had nothing to do with creative at all. You know, sometimes like, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, in the past she ran creative, but that's years and years ago. Sometimes when people go, oh, it's Stephanie McMahon, blah, 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 creative. And it's like, that was a very valid point 10 years ago. But she is, I mean, like, you know, she has like literally nothing to do with creative. So it's not in, in that sense. I don't think you'll be seeing any changes. But, you know, as far as if you were, um, you know, one of the main sponsors or a media person, uh, or something like that. You know, it's a, it's probably the person in the company who may have been your uh, contact point. Yeah. All right. So obviously, uh, new issue of the Observer's up. If you want to read more about Stephanie, it is in the Observer WrestlingObserver dot com, and, uh, and and a ton about Sasha Banks and Naomi. We're trying to avoid that topic here today. <laughs> is there anything new this morning? If the no, answer is no, just say no, and we'll move on. There's, to the next there's topic. absolutely not. There's nothing new this morning on it that that isn't in the issue. I okay. mean, I guess if you if you haven't read the issue, there's a ton in the issue. But but since I wrote the issue, I don't. I know nothing since since last night. Okay. So uh, Roman Reigns needs opponents, even though he's not around. Well, he does need opponents because he's going to be working three shows this summer. So yeah, he's going to be working three shows this summer. You know, maybe, 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 maybe a TV or a house show too, but three, three big shows. Yeah. All right. So uh, who do we got? The obvious uh, Riddle, Riddle Orton, and Drew McIntyre are the leading candidates right now. Yeah. Uh, it's great, great idea to pin Riddle in that uh, six man. Well, I'm not sure we're not going to see him pinned again a couple times. Well, you're probably right about that. <laughs> so what is what is Roman's schedule for this summer? And is there any discussion about splitting these belts up so we actually have a champion again? Which I never thought I would say because I advocated putting the championships together. But I didn't um, expect the champion to then leave. Yeah, well, everyone expected, you know, I mean, like the whole thing was just they're eventually going to have two champions. But um, um, I don't know when, but uh, his schedule is July 2nd. You know, I mean, he's going to work TVs to build up these shows. But his three big matches are July 2nd, Vegas, July 3rd, Nashville, and September 3 in Cardiff. You know, the three stadium shows. Um, I don't think he's going to be doing any pay-per-views besides those. Um, he's not on Chicago. Um, and after that, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he works Survivor Series and then... Uh, you know, um, we'll see what happens. You know, obviously, you know, Royal Rumble and WrestleMania will be all over. We were uh, talking about the uh, XFL. And Saudi shows. He'll, he'll work the Saudi shows, I, I would, uh, you know, for, almost for sure. Yes. We were talking about the uh, XFL deal, uh, the, the new TV deal and the season kicking off and everything like that. And uh, I got to thinking, and I don't know what your thoughts are, but, uh, you know, Rock's got a very, very busy filming schedule. Yes, he does. But he's also got the uh, kickoff of the XFL, so to speak. Which is going to be very time-consuming. Yes. And so my my thought was, you know, is it possible that uh, he is going to do zero movie commitments for the first quarter of uh, 2023, which would allow him to do WrestleMania without having to worry about movie commitments and also have the time to help launch the first season of the XFL. So actually the timing for doing a WrestleMania match would be excellent this year because he has two different projects which would uh, require him to uh, uh, take time off from movies. Well, I'm, I'm sure at this point he doesn't know anyway. You know what I mean? It's like it's like ideas will come to him if, if and 
you know, depending on what the projects are that he has to do. I mean, WrestleMania is not going to be number one on his priority list. Um, if he's got some big blockbuster movie thing coming up or a new TV show that he's got to film. He's got Young Rock, you know, things like that. I mean, um, thankfully, the travel isn't so bad. I mean, the travel situation is so bad. Like last year when, you know, he wanted to do a show, but uh, he was in Australia and he couldn't go back and forth. But, um, I mean, you know, it's always... You know, until January, it's, you know, if he's going to do WrestleMania against Roman Reigns or not, that's, you know, until January, it's just a hypothetical. You know, in January, he'll have a better idea. But now, you know, it's six months from really knowing if he'll be able to do it. I, I'm still skeptical he's going to do this match. But uh, if if he if he doesn't, what in the world do they have for WrestleMania next year? Well, I mean, a lot of times in July, they have no idea what they're going to be doing at WrestleMania next year. But Well, I mean, even um, if you have no idea, uh, well, what idea could you come up with for well, WrestleMania? You've got you to get somebody really you, hot. You've crushed Braun Breaker, everybody. Braun Breaker wins the Rumble. Braun Breaker, Gable Steveson, I don't know. I mean, it's yeah. like, you know, you know. I mean, um, maybe there's another uh, celebrity that we haven't thought of, although I can't even come up with a name. Bad yeah. Bunny, the Pushes movie in his new, <laughs> his new action role. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This seems to be a well, Cody, a, a I mean, problem. honestly, I guess, Cody, yeah, Cody. Cody yeah, Rhodes. It's got to be Cody, Cody right? Yeah, yeah, Cody Rhodes. They're not Russian. If it's not They're... Braun, it's Cody. Um, I it think it's much, if it's not, if it's it's much not, more if it, likely Cody than Braun. It I would should say. be. It should. Be. Um, yeah, yeah. I would say. I would say if it's not Rock, I would say Cody's the favorite. Yeah. Which means you have to protect Cody and make sure that he is <laughs> untouchable for the oh, most part. Oh, get out of here, Mike! Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> I'm just saying protect it would be nice. Him. Well, if it was, if I it mean, was they me, should. But if it was me, <laughs> I would. I would make him untouchable, but. Um, that's going to be very challenging for people who thrive on 50-50 booking to do that. I mean, he could lose. He could lose if it's done the right way a couple times. Or, you know, but I wouldn't want to do actually maybe once. <laughs> but uh, you know, don't. well, I mean, we've we're going to find out a lot in a couple of weeks because it'll be the third Seth Rollins Cody match, and yeah. Cody has won both of the other matches. Yes. So uh, in a 50-50 company, I mean, he's either losing or we're going to get a very rare. Guy wins all three matches against Top Star, which I think they should do. It's not going to hurt I, Seth. It doesn't I mean, make any difference I, whatsoever for him. I I think that there's no argument for Seth winning this match. I don't think there's an argument. Well, there's no logical winning. argument, but the argument would be, well, Cody beat him twice, but, so he's yeah, got to get that's a not win. A, that's, not, that's not a valid argument. It's when, not when, a valid when, argument. When, I'm telling when, you what their argument would be because they're I mean, all about 50-50. Yeah, but the thing is, the thing, the thing is, is that without a doubt – Cody going for the championship is something that they're going to do. Okay. So until they get there, Seth Rollins shouldn't be beating him. I mean, afterwards, like let's say Cody gets his run, whatever, um, Seth can beat him then. But now, no, no. I mean, it, it, it doesn't make I can't. I cannot come up with a valid argument to beat Cody before he gets a championship match. Well, if it's just a matter of he gets beat by a better man because it's not a gimmick match, you don't give Seth an out that way, then what do you do with Seth? Then what's Seth, Seth's next step on that Looks, roster where he works with somebody else? Seth's been in that position. It's like Kevin Owens. Those guys, they're kind of recycled. They work with other people. You know, I mean, Seth's not wrestling Roman. Cody is. So Cody should win. Well, if let me Seth ask you this, since we're talking about the, the, the lack of depth on the roster and they always go back to what they know, a guy that they can always go back to that people really believe in is Kevin Owens. Is there a way that even though we've seen things a zillion times with Kevin Owens and pretty much everybody except for Cody, is there a way to always bring Kevin Owens back like Lazarus in case you need him to be a world championship contender? For a pay-per-view, they could do it. Yeah, they could heat somebody up. Um, I, it would be tough. But, you know, I mean, the brand draws anyway. It doesn't even matter. The match is that much. If you call it WrestleMania, people are going to buy tickets. So, yes, Kevin's very um, talented. And, and, they, you know, I wouldn't think he'd be high on the list. But I don't think if worse comes to worse, can you put him there? Of course you can, yeah. What the hell happened to this uh, women's audience for NXT this week? Um, Good God. What happened? What, what do you mean? I mean, the, 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 you mean the rating being up or no? The women's viewership was like all time, all time record lows. Oh, I did not see that. I didn't even look that closely at the at the numbers. I just know that the um, NXT number itself was way up from the week before. Yeah, the NXT number was way up, but uh, I think it was uh, women eighteen to forty nine was a zero point zero five. Oh, they've done that before. 
They've done that before. Well, so all the good. dudes heard it was an all-women show and decided to come back to the show, and all the women said, I heard it was an all-women show, we hate Tiffany Stratton, we're out of here. Is that what happened, Brian? I don't know. That's why no, I asked done, Dave. They've, they've done, they've done, um, they've done lower than that with women before. I mean, like, like normally, I mean, the eighteen to thirty-four number that they usually do is like, you know, 0. 0.07 anyway, and and it's more guys than women. So that's that's not that unusual, really. I mean, it's just, you know, um, <laughs> yeah, that's not that's not that an unusual of a number. That is a very low female viewership for a program. Yeah. Well, listen, the new Observer, everybody, is available at WrestlingObserver.com right now if you want to head up and uh, check it out. Yes, if you want to read about Sasha and Naomi, that's the top story. And uh, Dave's got all of the details in there, so you can head up there and uh, check it out. Plus all the other news. There's 40,000 words of news and information in every Observer. And uh, you can grab a print copy, P.O. Box 1228, Campbell, California, 95009. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. A rusty, rusty rose, 10, 4, <laughs> Dusty. Is it rusty or dusty? <laughs> it's uh, it's dusty. Harmon Blanchett. <laughs> okay, out of ring. Her- and- Herman and Blanchett. <laughs> Harwin. <laughs> Way back then, they had cha- chain barricades. <laughs> and then they had a tag team with Rich Fl- uh, Rick Flair and some more guys. And... <laughs> So that was that. I'm just too... Who who did Rusty Rhodes wrestle? If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.